Like. Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about particle effects, which um, can add a lot of kind of polish to a game, make it look really cool. So uh, what we're going to do here is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. Actually, no, I don't need to because I already have a folder for materials. So I'm going to go into my uh, materials folder and I'm going to create a new material. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to call this um, explosion particle. Uh, okay, I'm going to change this from the standard shader. Uh, I'm going to make it a particle shader. I think I want alpha blended. You might need to come back and change that. It needs to know what image it needs to use. So to do that, I'm going to go into my art assets, which is from the physics pack, which can be found at kenny.nl. Um, I'm going to choose other. And I want to use this diamond star because the close this color of it is pretty close to white. I'm going to grab this diamond star and pull it into there. So now this is the um, uh, the uh, I can't even think of words the image that this material is going to use. Um, cool. Now let's go to our create menu here, and we want to create a new. Actually, nope. Let's go to. Uh, uh, component, component, particle system. It's been a while since I made a particle system. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so go to game object. We're going to go to effects. And we're going to create a particle system. All right. So right now, I'm going to move this off to the side so we can see it better. Zoom in on it. This doesn't look at all like what we want. First of all, it doesn't match the theming that we have. We have this, all these sharp edges, and this is all soft and weird. So um, first things first, let's change it so that our uh, default particle shader here isn't the thing. So let's go to our materials. And I'm going to grab our explosion particle, and I'm just going to pull that onto there. Cool. Right away, it looks better. Next thing we're going to do I'm going to make it so that instead of going up, these have a little bit of gravity to it. So there's a lot of stuff you can play with with particles to make it look however you want it to. I'm just going to go through a few things. I'm going to change the duration first to 1. You don't see an immediate um, change with that. We'll leave looping on, though we won't leave looping on when we actually finish this. Um, I don't want to start delay. I want the start lifetime to be random between two constants. I want it to be random between, say, 0.1 and 1. Zoom out so you can see what that's doing. So they're only lasting a little bit, and then they're kind of fading out. I want the start speed to be random between two constants. And I want it to be random between, say, 0.5. Oops, I did that wrong. 0.5 and 1. It's looking better. Let's zoom in here on this. Um, next, I want the size to be random as well. So between two constants, say 0.2 and 1. Now we've got some variation in the particles. That looks way better. Um, start rotation, random between two constants, between 0 and, say, 720. So now they're, they're not all looking exactly the same. Gravity modifier, guess what? Random between two constants. Let's do between 0.1 and 1. That looks so much better now. Um, start color. I'm going to do a gradient. And the gradient I'm going to use is that one. Holy cow, it's looking way better. Um, simulate space local, speed, delta time. OK, cool. Now let's change our emission here. So right now it's emitting over time. I want it to do none over time. And instead, I want it to do a burst. And I want that burst to be, um, let's say, between 10 and 40. Yeah. And then go back up here to our start color. And let's do random color. That looks so much better. Uh, okay, let's change our shape. 
Right now, it's, believe it or not, in the shape of a cone. I want that to be in the shape of a circle. And I want that circle to be rotated on the z-axis. 90, nope, not 90 degrees. Is it 180? Oh, haha, that's what I need to do. I want to rotate on the x-axis uh, to zero. There we go. All right, cool. So now if I go back down here to my shape, um, let's actually pull this over into the scene so we can see what it'll look like in the scene. It's actually not bad. Let's make our radius a little smaller. Uh, right now it's at one. Pull that down so they're a little more tightly bunched like that. Cool. So I'm going to window shade, shape and emission. The next thing I'm going to look at is color over lifetime. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to click on the color and I don't really want to change the color itself. What I do want to change is the alpha value. So I'm going to grab this here. No. Pull this over, have this have that alpha value. And then I'm going to double click again to create a new one and I'm going to pull that alpha value all the way down to nothing. Let's kind of space these out a little bit. Maybe not that much. Ah, that looks so much better now. Um, uh, let's change size over lifetime too. So go ahead and click that. I'm going to do separate axes. Actually, no, let's not do separate axes. I'm going to click on that curve. Right now it's showing them getting bigger, which actually looks pretty good. You can have them get smaller over their lifetime. So they're kind of going out of existence, and I kind of like that. So I'm going to just adjust this curve a little bit here so it's not quite so steep. And there we go. Cool. You can spend a lot of time on particle systems. All right. So I'm going to turn off looping just so I can see what it's going to look like when I simulate it. Nice and short, just like that. Sweet. All right. I'm going to rename this particle system to um, Brick Destroy Particle. It helps if I can spell correctly. And then I'm going to make this a prefab. So I'm going to go to my prefabs, pull this in, and then I'm going to take this out of my scene. Just delete it. Cool. Now I'm going to go to my uh, Brick Health script. So we want our Brick Health Manager. And we want one of these to pop up every time a brick is destroyed. So to do that, I'm going to go up here to my uh, global variables. I'm going to create a, I'm just going to do this ahead of everything. It doesn't matter where you put it. Public game object brick destroy particle. Then down here, where I have my if brick health is less than or equal to one, destroy brick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate. And whenever you instantiate, you need to give it an object, uh, a place, and a rotation. So I'm going to instantiate brick destroy particle. And my uh, location is going to be transform.position. And my rotation is going to be Quaternion dot identity, which just means it's going to be the regular rotation it has. Uh, I'm going to save this. I'm going to pop back into Unity. Um, find my prefabs, find my square brick. And right now it doesn't know what the brick destroy particle is. Um, grab that from here, put it there, and do the same thing with the triangle brick. Put it there. So now when I hit play, I want to leave this on maximize because I just want to show you something here. If I choose, I didn't mean to choose the text, I meant to choose the brick itself. There we go. Nope, still grab something I didn't want. No, let's just grab it this way. So, aha, there you are. So it knows what the brick destruction particle is. Now if I do, See, that little thing adds so much feel to this. It makes it feel like it's 
Oh, much cooler. Super colorful now. Yeah, so much better. All right, cool. So um, that's adding particles. Uh, if you have any questions, please. Oh, actually, ah, before I go, if you'll notice something, what's happening here is we've got all these um, all these uh, particle systems that are left alone because once they play, they're done. So we're not done yet. Uh, what we need to do is we need to have these exist only for a little bit of time and then turn themselves off. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our scripts and we're going to create a new C-sharp script. And we're going to call this uh, particle life, maybe, manager. This is just going to be a script that's going to turn the particle system off after a certain amount of time. So I'm going to open this up in Unity. I'm going to create a public float, and we'll call this lifetime. And we're going to create a private float. I'm going to call this lifetime second. So I want one float that I set in the editor, and I want the other one to be ticking down. So I'm not going to set that in the editor. But when I start, I'm going to set lifetime seconds to be equal to lifetime. And then every time the update method is called, I want to tick away from the lifetime. So I'm going to do lifetime seconds, which is the one that I'm going to allow to change, the private one, minus equals time dot delta time. Delta in math means difference. And time dot delta time is how much time went away since the last frame. Then I'm going to say if lifetime seconds is less than or equal to zero, not just equal to zero, because what could happen is it could have been like 0.1, and then after the next frame went by, it could be at negative two, so it was never actually equal to zero. So I want to do less than or equal to zero. Then I'm going to do this dot game object dot set active false. If I spelled false correctly, that would be great. You don't have to do the this dot, but I like doing it because I, I think it makes things really clear to me. So I'm going to save this script really quickly. Pop back into Unity. Find my uh, brick destroy particle prefab. Right there. And I'm going to grab my particle lifetime manager and pull it onto it. Did I? Bah. Particle life manager. There we go. So I want its lifetime to be one second. So this time, if I hit play, okay, cool. So I got my bricks showing up. And now these particle systems go away when they're done and they're not taking up any more memory. Ta da! Okay, so now we're done. Um, Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Um, I'm going to upload the updated version of this code probably later today. Um, I might not get to it till tomorrow, though. So yeah, have a great day. Thanks for watching.